How beautiful are voices of those that preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. This is Destiny Orb International, a mountain of truth and genuine encounter with power. We welcome you to a feast of mysteries with our man of God, Joshua Anthony. Il a coco, coco, pelle, tu n'y en donnes 
Isamanako Kamela Takila Toto Belli Esana Mano Kamela Kamela Ila Tame Esimina Na Kamila Ta Asimilita Ele Pete Kopili Nano Kamela Ta Fe Ajiba La Kamela La Tamela Tete Isamana Ko Kamila Da Ila Mo Solo To Mili Kitale Yabadate Amono to ko kapi 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 Esti la manana Ele ila boto to kele Idabata ko kamela Ti atabala koko Esti la badata Le manaka kapi la tabe Ete bete ko kapi la ta Ila batale Esti nana ko male E yabada tobo Esa ko 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 Esti la tabe Tame sabe, e ya bata toko mela ila bata iya koko kope ti tafisa ela toka kabela le ela tate iya ya bata kome le ta ili tata isamana to kabe 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 ayayayaya tame la ta ila koko ko. Tabala ko pele tame ila toto e ya bata ko me la le ya 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 e le bala ko ko be ko ko be e samana no no me ti ya e ya ya e ya 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 e ya 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 e e ya ya e ya. Thank <laughs> Hallelujah. If you can be open, if you can be open, there is a stirring that is going on tonight. The Lord is stirring out spiritual gift. I know what I'm saying. As Kubra Tatala Katola Kamenuska Latala Kofleplia, can we just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute? As Kubra Tatlo Netia Bran Soflepelakate, Iko Bantia Kamoska Latala Kato, can you just go on streets? Abato Tala Komeleti, Ele Bran Tokla Menuska Latala Kaba, Ibran Tokla Nepratoska Latala Kofeleti, Abon Sketa, Abon Sketa, Etu Bran Tatlo Netatila Bran Tonsi. A poco 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 Yo, there is fire, fire in this place. Is the fire of the Holy Ghost? There is fire, fire in this place tonight. There is fire, fire in this place. Is the fire, fire of the Holy Ghost. There is fire in this place tonight. For I can see He is changing our lives. And I know my life is changing. 
Yes, I can see the fire of the Holy Ghost burning of every time. For you will never return the same way you came. You will never return the same way you came. Something definite must happen to you. You will never return the same way you came. We cause the sickness, we cause the disease, we cause that pain. We remove the spirit of death. I see a breaking of a brand new day. I see a breaking of a brand new day. I see a breaking, a breaking of a brand new day. Ila koko flat ila no sabi. Etia to kami na nexia. Semele kia to ste. Ima na to semele kia to. We have come to God. Yes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, I do not capa la confle emeniti abandon skefle beli ki atatakuma. That you will change our lives. That as people return, they will truly know that they met with you, the King. That you will shift us. You will shift destinies tonight. You will transform our lives. You will bring new dimensions of possibilities into our life you will increase our capacity so that the oil will not waste so that we can now take more territories oh god that lord there will be an increase in the measure of grace dimension and result that thou has been bearing in our lives for they grew from strength to strength everyone that appeared before god in zion in the name that is above every name i pray that anyone seek here under the sound of my voice in the name of jesus you are declared well in the name of jesus is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church let them pray over him anointing him with oil then the prayer of faith not the anointing oil the prayer of faith shall save the sick and if he had committed any sin the lord would forgive him in the name that is above every name i take authority over every infirmity i rebuke that spirit from your life in the name of jesus 
I take authority over the spirit of Osa. I take authority over every menstrual pain in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every death sentence you've carried upon your life in the name of Jesus. Let there be strange deliverance this minute in the name of Jesus. Let there be harvest of testimonies tonight. Lord, we ask that you look upon us, Lord, as we vow to give you the glory for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come just jam our hands together for Jesus as we take our seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you just turn left and right and tell your neighbor, neighbor, <coughs> you are welcome. Hallelujah. There is power in being built. One of the things I just want to admonish us before we begin is please stay and be built by God. One of the things I'm so careful of is most of us, mostly we young people, we like doing extravagant things, which is good. We like big programs here and there so that people can come. It's not bad, but there is nothing as powerful as being built. I beg you in the name of God, run away from hilarious ordination. It will kill you before your time. Now, I've learned that truly the stage is only for prepared people. If God begins to give you access, if God begins to give you platforms to minister, it's simply because he wants to extend um, what he's doing in and through your life to affect others. One of the ways I have noticed that how God promotes men is that he not just increases the level of grace in your life, he also increases the span of your influence. The Bible tells us how the gospel is supposed to begin in affecting Jerusalem, then Judea, then all of Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. The formula is that you will start from Jerusalem. The goal is to actually reach the uttermost part of the earth. But now when you are faithful in Jerusalem, then all of a sudden you begin to know that or you begin to see that your music may be whatever you do, it can be your message. It will move from Jerusalem. It can be your business. Then you begin to see that your business begins to expand. Now, if before all or what people know of you is that the people that know you maybe are just those present in Sokoto, then God increases that influence. Then you notice Kebi Zamfara. Now, this is how men rise. You know, the Bible teaches us this. Jesus increases both in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. That, you see, one of the things you must learn, in, in terms of promotion, God did not leave that equation to man. You can do all you can. The Bible says, horses are prepared for battle, but victory is from the Lord. So, Paul can plant, Apollos can water. It is only God that can promote a man. No matter how you try to run around, you see, most times I'm not trying to sound sarcastic. We are very honest in our intention. You see people, ah, please invite me. No, you don't need that. The Bible says nobody likes a candle and puts it under a bushel. Mostly for choir members. You don't need to fight and say, please, let me lead the song. You don't need that. Just walk on yourself. Keep building. I've learned that the reason why we are having this congregation now is not you, it's me. Because you must understand, the oil is poured in a vessel. And the moment the capacity of the vessel is filled, the oil will stop. So it's not that the oil cannot keep flowing. It's the availability of the vessel. That is why you must learn to retreat. Now, you see, see I've learned that men are looking for solutions. So when you see people give you excuses, why well, you see I'm not in that meeting. You see, it's just a report card that sincerely I have not been well anointed enough. What did Jesus do to 5,000 people that made them forget to, to eat food for three days and three nights? Now 5,000 men, they climb the mountain with him. Sama, I beg you, let's, there is a level of resort. You and I, 
must begin to command if the nations of the earth will fall at our knees. You see, the reason why they mock our evangelism, you carry flyer, you are trying to propose a, a, a dimension of God that is not even captured in your life. So you tell a man, God can bless you. He looks at your life. Your life lacks. That is why he tells you there is a formula by which God is glorified. He says, he says hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, not just small fruit. Sama, there is a dimension of result. Your life and my life must captured if truly the systems of this world will be brought on their knees. I will always say this. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. No matter how honest they are, hunger will carry us to Egypt. So there is this dimension of result. See, what, see there are basically seven mountains of influence. And by God's grace, this one we'll be looking next for next week. Now, this seven mountain of actually represent the strategies by which the cosmos is actually being run. There are seven of them. And I tell you nothing but the truth. Every believer here belongs to one. You must recognize your mountain of influence and master it enough so that you can command resolve and compel the loyalty of men. Men are not goats. Men don't just come to you and bow. No, there is a level of resort whereby people can, they, they cannot deny. We must become a model. You see, a reference point. Our life must be a representation of the intention of God to the people. See, the formula is follow me as I follow Christ. Men cannot see Christ. They follow a man who is following Christ. And if that must be possible, your life and my life must become a representation of the intentions of God to the people. I beg you in the name of God, can you just pray a prayer? Lord, give me grace for genuine results. See, you will explain the gospel. I tell you nothing but the truth. If you, if you rise in influence and you come here, ah, this is what the devil knows. That is why you see all these celebrities, they wear rags. And you see our boys wearing rags. It's not because of anything. They've command that level of influence whereby they influence it. Okay. You will win See, you will win a nation in a day if you understand this. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? He never invited any kind of people. He invited kings. The Bible talked about, he invited top officials that were in charge of a particular mountain of influence. If you get the shepherd, forget about the sheep. So you come here, whereby a businessman, highly, highly connected, a tongue talker, and they see you talking in tongues. You don't need to preach to them. Because just by your influence. They can, because the, the secret of a man is in his story. So they look at you and they say. Kai, is, is either is this tongue stain. Before you know it. From next week. They will start coming to the church. This is how we gain through dominion. John chapter 4. Kai, from verse 19. Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume, Jesus, I pour, I pour love over you. Let my worship rise like a sweet perfume, Jesus, I pour. I pour my love over you. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Jesus met a Samaritan woman in Sika by the well of Jacob. And the Bible clearly tells us that there had actually been some level of antipathy between the Jews and the Samaritan. You are not supposed to be found as a Jew is doing anything with a Samaritan woman. It actually happened during the days of King um, uh, the, the days where King, uh, 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 um, the king of Assyria took the children of Israel to captivity. And Jesus began to teach this woman something and he unveiled some certain things to her. And the Bible says, she asked I, I am a question. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Verse 20. 
and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship her concept about worship was tied to location and place that you see we are supposed or we propose that the right place to worship God is on this mountain but you the Jews you are proposing another location and you are telling us that where we ought to worship God is in Jerusalem just like how that brother comes to meet you like what we have actually reduced kingdom advance to I come and see a brother who is dedicated and a worker in a church I am trying to see how I can convince him to come to my church because my entire scope about worship is location so I look at the equa brethren and I say these guys are not worshipping God well it's the same mistake she said Kai I now know you are a prophet but there is this thing that has bothered me you know I, your, our fathers worshipped here but you Jews are telling us that it is in Jerusalem so you see the winners brethren we come to you and they will advocate a gospel to make it look as though your place of worship is not the right place now the concept of worship was totally location based as of this time next verse he now said Jesus said unto her believe me you see, you know, he wanted her to, to, to he was trying to get her attention so he said believe me the hour cometh that simply means there is, there is an age a dispensation where location is not the most important thing where, where the place is not the hour an age, a, a dispensation, a generation, a, a kind of people when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Jesus is trying to downplay the concept of location that I know Old Testament worship is tied or location based. There will be a dispensation, there will be a time, there will be a generation that will arise in a particular era where location will not be important verse 23 I could do me less to fear the hour cometh and now is now is now you know it, it was the beginning of a new dispensation when the two worshippers now he begins to introduce or indoctrinate you that see there are some kind of worshippers their name is called true worshippers. There are also others. They are called false worshippers. If there are true worshippers, then there must be false worshippers. True worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Why? The Father seeketh such to worship him. God is seeking for a particular kind of species of people. I know our churches are filled with people. Every Sunday, we celebrate them, the numbers for summer. Among all the a thousand, a two thousand, five hundred, or whatever the numerical strength that attended each Sunday service or midweek service, there are a kind of people God's heart is yearning for. There is a particular group or species of people, and they are called true worshippers. The Bible says the Father is seeking for such. Then the next verse now says, God is spirit. And they that worship him. In case you care to worship God, there is a pattern. You do not bring your idea. I know there are religious cities here and there. They've handed over to us ordinances upon ordinances that we practice. We have some recitation. We have some execution of procedure as mandated by our denomination. I'm not trying to go against those uh, procedures, but he's trying to tell you that see, if you want to really worship God, then you must do it in spirit and in truth. Hey! In not talk of let me eat your brand stuff there. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. In not of let Ketty. First Peter 2, 5. Follow this. You also, me and you, as lively stones. You might not get the full import of those of this. In those days, they don't have blocks, 
they have stones. So they will pick a stone from the field and take it to the quarry master. The quarry master will shape the stone so that it can fit into the building. So the Bible now, a king source, if you start from verse 1, 2, and 3, it calls Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone. But here, it says we are as lively stones. We are being built up a spiritual house. So now, that stone is used to build a spiritual house. You and I are lively stone that God is using to build a house. A house is a system of shelter. Now, this shelter God is building is so that he can dwell inside. We said a spiritual heart and holy priesthood. Remember those days, worship was location based. The children of Israel would travel to Jerusalem. They came to the temple. Now when they come to the temple, they need to meet a priest. But now the Bible is saying that, see, in this new era, we are not meeting a priest. We are that tabernacle. We are that temple. And also we are that priest as holy priesthood and the reason is to offer up to offer something he calls it spiritual sacrifices remember when they go to meet the priest those days they will bring some sacrifices it is the priest that will offer the sacrifices to God on behalf of the people but the bible now says here we will not offer physical sacrifices we will offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ the question is this what are these spiritual sacrifices because this is what truly defines what worship is what are these spiritual sacrifices that me and you you know the bible tells you in revelation chapter 5 9 and 10 that we are been made um, kings and priests unto us so now we are not just kings we are also priests and the reason for our priesthood is to offer offer now it leaves you with a responsibility this classification based on function I've taught this before whereby there are two classifications of believers according to scripture classification based on identification now you are the son of God based on your identification with Christ but now there is a classification based on function now you are called a priest is simply because you have a responsibility the duty of a priest to offer something to God and this is what it means to offer or to worship God in spirit and in truth, the worship of true worshippers. NIV, Romans 12:1, the first spiritual worship. Romans 12:1, NIV. Can we read together? One, two, go. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. To offer, offer your bodies as what? Holy and pleasing to God. Now read this. One, two, go. Your first worship that is a living sacrifice is the presentation or the offering. Not, I just want to say. You know, choir now. Let's be in the mood of worship. No, sir. That's not worship. That the first spiritual act of worship is the presentation of your body as a living sacrifice. Now, let's dissect this. The Bible says a living sacrifice. One of the things you must understand about sacrifice. Sacrifice is something that is dedicated to a deity. So those guys, they will come with their sacrifice and place it at the feet of the priest. A sacrifice is dead. But this Bible calls it a living sacrifice. You know why? To your own self, your body is dead. Now, it's like Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet. The very life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. That simply means that what you control and conduct your life in the body, remember, your body is what you use to contact the physical world. So what Jesus or what the Bible is trying to teach us that you see, this body of mine should be presented to God. God will be the one to coordinate its affairs. I know we are people here who misuse their body. Sama, you may come to church. You may go to a particular location. Sama, you see that body you are misusing. 
It's not your own. That is why he now begins to mentor you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, that you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, which are his. So, therefore, I urge you, brothers, brothers, in view of God's mercy, based on what Jesus Christ has done to you, done for you, he says to offer your bodies as living sacrifice. That simply means that anything God wants you to do. So worship is not when you are singing. When you are brushing, you are worshiping God. You know why? The life now you live in the flesh is no longer your own. It's a living sacrifice in the sense that your body now has been dedicated to the Lord. You are not to misuse it. Many of us are, we, 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 we involve ourselves in different promiscuity. No, sir. Sir, ma, the first act of spiritual worship is the offering of your body to God as a living sacrifice. So God dwells in you. God lives in you. God directs your step. Because this body now is no longer your own. You have brought it to the altar of God. You've laid it down at his feet. So his life is now what indwells it. So his life will coordinate it. You are not supposed to be the Lord of your life. That you see your body is a living sacrifice in the sense that to your own ambition, to your own whatever you want, it has died. You have offered it to God. The Bible calls this, this is your spiritual act of worship as a priest. As <laughs> This is your spiritual act of worship. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 10, 5 and 6. Hebrews 10, 5 and 6. Quickly please. The law is only Hebrews 10, 5 and 6. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice an offering you did not desire. But a body. A body. Sama, will you present this body to the Lord? Let my worship rise like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour. I pour my love over you. Jesus, let my worship rise like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour, I pour my love over you. Let my worship rise, Jesus. Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Daily, I want to lay this body at your feet and see you direct it. I know I have desires. I know I have appetites. I'm a man flowing with blood in me. But this body, that's why it's a living sacrifice. Let my worship rise. He will wake you in the night to pray and that limitation will show up. But if you understand that see, that prayer will save a generation. Then you leave that limitation and you offer that body to him. It's a sacrifice. So you sacrifice your sleep. Why? So that the kingdom of God can advance. There are days he will stare in your heart. That's it. I'm calling you for a one week fast. Your body will say no. He will say no sir. I want it. Remember, I died for it. So now as a priest, you will bring it at his feet and say, Oh God, not my will. I, I understand. This body, I know is weak and the flesh, the spirit is willing. But no, sir, I have sustained an intelligence with God to see to it that my body is brought down. I put my body under so that I, by no means I become a castaway. See, the true essence of worship is that our lives become a continuation of the sermon you had on Sunday. Not that when it's on Sunday, you put on the attire of a worshiper. And we come to church. We'll feel church. We lift up our hands. 
And you know, many of us is even holy and immoral hands that we lift up to God. On Saturday, we fornicate. There are even people who say, Today is Sunday. There are certain things I don't do. No, sir. That's not worship. Worship is not when the choir can, you know, tune a raise a voice and you fall on you. No, that's not worship. That when you go home, your life is a continuation of the sermon you had on Thursday or on Sunday. So that is what worship. So you offer it to God. Daily I die so that He can be glorified. He comes by 3 a.m. That is when the sleep is sweet. But you know, the flesh is truly weak. You yield it as a sacrifice because the life that is living in it is not your own again. That is what it means to offer spiritual sacrifice to God. A body you prepared for me. Verse 6 Let my worship rise. Hi. Like a sweet. We bought offerings. I know you brought your offering. You brought seeds. And sin offering. You were not pleased. A body. Ha! Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pray. Oh God. The, believers who, the believer who lives in sin has neither known or understand what true worship is. True worship first is the offering of your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. The hallmark of true worship is to allow God to take total and absolute control of your lives and bodies so that he can execute his, and prosecute his agenda through our bodies. Like a sweet perfume, like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pray. Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Give us King James Version. Romans 6, one, verse 1. Say, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Quickly he shouted, God forbid. <laughs> Verse 2. God, how shall we that were dead to sin live any longer therein? Many, many don't know that they are dead. Now, I want to explain how you overcome addictions. Just follow this. The reason why he says there is something you do not know. He now said, Know ye not. If a deep in you knew it, you will not allow sin, Lord, over your body. That so many of us, as many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. The day they masked you, it was his death they masked you into. And why did he die? The wages of sin is death. So you, as far as that sinful life is con concerned, it has died with Christ. So that is what you did not know. So, as a person... When I'm tempted to sin, I should know and understand that see, that guy who was a sinner died. Next verse. He now says, no, um, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should walk in the newness of life. That we have been buried with Christ in death. And now there is a newness of life. That I'm supposed to walk in daily. Next verse. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> Knowing this, there is something you must know. That our old man is crucified with him. So Joshua the fornicator was crucified. If you don't know it, you will leave your body to sin. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth, from now on, we should not serve sin. You must understand that that body of sin has been crucified. So that from now, you will not yield your body to sin. For he, this is where the miracle is. One, two, go. Let's read it. For he that is dead is what? When I found this, it's not just prayer that frees you from sin. It is the dead man that is free 
from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. Verse 8. He now says that now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Verse 9. He now says, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more. Till you start considering that the death of Jesus was your death. He now says that death had no more dominion over him. Look at verse 10. Ah, give us new King James. Be ready to give us plenty of versions. Yeah. Let my worship rise. Let my worship rise. That's a sweet perfume. For the death that he died, the death that Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. I was like, so the death that Jesus died, he died to sin. So Dutch is dead to sin. The life that he now lives, he lives it unto God. So this life now I have in my body, I'm not supposed to yield it to serve sin because the death that he died. There was a death that he died. He died that death to sin. So that the life now that you will live, you will live it unto God. Next verse. <laughs> oh God, likewise, you also reckon yourself. Think of your, give us maybe good news or NLP. Good news. Likewise, you also, you also reckon yourself. Give us good news, please. Think of yourself as dead. So they came and met you and said, Boy, Mogo joint now. You say, Ah, the death that he died, he died to sin. <laughs> he, he just is dead. He said, Recon, think of yourself as dead to sin. <laughs> Let me share this hilarious testimony. Those days that we were misbehaving, having girlfriend here and there. When Jesus appeared, when he hit me, for three months, I was with God. Switched off my phone. I made sure my girl. I I I I cut off. And the day I went, you know what I did? See, he says, think of yourself as what? Dead. You are dead. So that guy that you know goes to mommy and takes seven bottles. When they come to meet you again, you tell them that mm, that guy died. He's not the one. I, I, I met her and I said, see. I have fell in love with somebody else. And she was like, how ah, will you fall in love with I said, I fell in love with Jesus. See, the, the judge died. This one, now you are seen. He says, think of yourself. So, he, he, he died to sin. So, you yourself, you also died to sin. So, the Bible is now saying, count yourself also as dead. So, if you were a thief before, you know, when you see and you are, you are, you are now tempted to know, you say, no, this guy died. The thief died with Christ. He says, think of yourself as dead to sin. So far as sin is concerned. Anywhere you see the mention of sin, Josh is dead. He is no longer alive. So are you. So far as sin is concerned. But living in fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Now go to verse, the next verse. He now says, in the same way, oh, sin must no longer rule over your mortal bodies so that you do not obey the, the desires of your natural self okay. no must you surrender any part of yourself to sin to be used for wicked purpose instead give yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and surrender your whole being to him he says to be used for righteous purpose this is what he calls to worship this is what is the definition of true worship. That your body and my body becomes holy and acceptable. You know, they say lift up holy hands. And, and many of us we will do. Some are, we are not all worship. Although we cried and we were shouting. Uh, that's not true worship. I, I'm here to disappoint you. That true worship is first of all the presentation of your body. Ha! Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour, I pour my love. I know we are young. That's why I'm trying to show us this. I know appetites are dear, but some are. Worship God now that you are young. Like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour, hey, I pour my love. Oh. 
Oh, let my worship rise, Lord. Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour. Jesus, I pour. I pour. The second one. The second one. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. King James Version. Like a sweet perfume. And a conjunction, a continuation of verse 1. Be not conformed to the world. Don't adjust. Don't take the shape of this world. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transformed is the Greek word metamorpho where the English get got metamorphosis egg lava pupa then adult when I found this so you can look at me today and see many limitations but there is a possibility in God whereby I can transit my former stage and move into something higher as like um, akin to what a snake does molting she shaves off her old self and comes up with a new chef. So the Bible is trying to tell you that see, there is a system of transformation in God. You can get transformed. How? By the renewing of the mind. He gave you an instruction. Do not conform to the world. But see, for you to achieve that, there is something you must do consistently. The renewing of the mind. See, this is the second, the, the, one of the most important thing. Follow this, I beg you, in the name of God. Now, give us an NLV. It says, NLV says, do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Allow God to transform or change you into a new person by changing the way you think. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Some people, your problem is nothing. Just the way you think. Now follow this. In See, this is a spiritual law that is recognized as a spiritual act of worship. In Psalm 78 verse 41. Psalm 78 verse 41. Give us King James Version. Psalm 78 verse 41. It says, And they limited the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. I found out that there is a possibility in this kingdom whereby a man by himself will limit God. See, irrespective of God's possibility and power to do what he wants to do in and through your life, there is a possibility that exists in this kingdom where I can by myself limit God. So, irrespective of how powerful God can do this, God can do that, God can give you a baby, give you a job, but sir, there is a possibility that exists in this kingdom. If my mind is unrenewed, I will limit the potency and the power of God. Now, follow this. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. See, the aim of the devil is to get your mind. Your mind. Whoever is in charge of your mind is in charge of your life. Now unto him that is able, God is able to do something exceeding abundantly above all, not some, that we ask or think. Ask or think. So your mouth says, I want a job. Your mind says, I don't want a job. See, your life now is a, reflect, is a reflection of what is in your mind. So you say, I want a husband, but you still think as a single person. Follow this. That there exists a possibility in this kingdom whereby a man can limit God. Now, see, why do you think that almost every tribe is associated with a particular way of thinking? That is why you see people who seek for prayers. See, there is something Selman talked in the mystery of deliverance. Three levels of deliverance. The first one is that the spirit influence is casted out. That is where you see people falling and manifesting. But you don't understand that the devil has already created a system of return. There is a deliverance that is true transformation by the word of God. For when his spirit leaves, he will go into dry lands, seek for us. He will not find, he will come back. That is why, Sama, when you see people who seek for prayer and are not willing to sit down and learn, I can bet you can pray for them. It's just two weeks, they will still come back with the same problem. For nature abhors virtue. That is why in um, Proverbs 23, verse 7, as he thinks in his heart, so he is. 
So you now, I line up. This is a law. You see what you are seeing me now, me like this. I am a reflection of my mind. This is akin to a mirror. Now follow this. Now, when you stand before a mirror, if you want to change anything, you don't change it from the mirror. You change it from yourself. So the Bible is trying to say that what you are seeing physically around you is a reflection of what is in your mind. For as he tinted in his heart, I know that is why you can pray for a job. You can pray for a baby. But Simon, one of the systems the devil will use is that in your mind, for God is able to do exactly exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask and think so you asked for something but you have been programmed to think lack you have been pro- now that is where Sokoto people are I know you produce an album but in your mind nothing good can come out of Sokoto but in your mouth you are secretly saying that God I want a lifting and I want a raise but God is trying God looks at your mind and says Kai as this one is thinking I will I will do exceedingly uh, according to what you are thinking so as he thinks in his heart so he is so this ministry is a reflection of my life your life your family is a is a law that although god is powerful that is why he says according to the power that worketh there is a power that works in you and it is the law of transformation that is why he now tells you that there is a kind of mind you must accept it's not enough to be born again you must enter the process of the renewal of the mind daily this is also an act of worship for you see unless your mind is renewed your life is not changed for that is why you notice that in, in, maybe you are, you are single one of the things the devil will be telling you that you might not get married now there are people you will just be receiving thoughts upon thoughts you will die. You will do this. Now, all of those things are arrows in the mind. That's why he tells you in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Ha. Oh God. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Verse 4. He says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, look at the strongholds. The first strongholds. He mentioned imaginations. Imaginations. So, those imaginations you are seeing, you cannot live above them as he thinks in his heart. So he is. I show you a law of creation in Hebrews chapter 11 from 3. Hebrews 11, 3. The technology of creation. The Bible clearly teaches us here. It says, through faith we understand that the words, the system, the cosmos were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That what you are seeing, the car, the house, everything you see in life came from what you cannot see. So that is how your life will be affected. That as you are thinking, those thoughts you cannot see, they are the ones responsible for the lack of favor you are seeing. Sir, you must enter a deliberate walk with God, whereby your mind is constantly being renewed. Thoughts that is not of God, you cast them out. It's a spiritual act of worship to God, whereby your mind is what James 1 21 tells us. It says that the salvation that received with meekness, the engrafted word that is able to save your soul, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls now he was not talking to unbelievers he was talking to men and women who were filled with the Holy Ghost but although they were filled with the Holy Ghost they will still behave the way they are or they will still be limited and limit God if their minds is not submitted to God so he tells us about a dimension or a possibility that exists in God whereby your souls is salvaged show you this last scripture Genesis chapter 11 from verse 3 King James verse let my worship rise <laughs> like a sweet perfume. Jesus, I pour, I pour my love. So God is telling you that, sir, your album can go places, but in your mind you say, Kai, it's not possible. Look at your house and you say, Kai, oh boy. Uh, nothing good can come here. God is trying to call you to dream with Him. But all you see in your mind is the map of, map of Sokoto. And you are meant for global impact. I know the business is small. But you see, all you see in your mind is that bank job. 
all you see in your mind about that music crew is that they will just be invited. You, you are not seeing anything. So God said, Kai, why are you limiting me? I know you've started going from programs. To, this is a dimension of my possibility that I can bear with you. See, I can make sure that this grace increases whereby they will take you outside the country. And you, are, you can't think with God. You can't journey with God. So your life is limited. I know you say, Kai, I'm, I'm 25. I, there, there is no, I, I'm not still graduated. But God is trying to tell you that, see, time with me is something I can manipulate. I'm the owner of time. I, I can move a step with you and cover 20 years but it's, it's imp- you can't see it it's like what happened to Abraham God told Abraham that says, see I want to make you the father of many nations Abraham didn't believe God had to call him by night and say Abraham wake up and brought him outside and said now look at the stars God was doing a mind renewal on him Abraham looked at it and God said now begin to count it Abraham counted and counted and started seeing the faces of children and Abraham said Kai, see, I, I can't count again and God said that is how your descendants will be and God brought him home and God said okay now from today I know your name is Abraham. You are now Abraham, the father of nations. Imagine Abraham going and somebody said, the father of nations. You know what God was doing? God was renewing his mind because God had actually given him a word of prophecy. But unless he begins to think like God, that is why when God has told you something about that ministry, sir, what he told you is true. I know you may not look at it. Sir, your body goes, your, your mind goes first. Then it comes to carry your body and comes with it to your future. What enters your future first is your mind. Then it comes. I know in the room you are drinking curry every day like me. No problem. But sir, as you drink that curry, what you should be seeing is the nations. What you should be seeing, sir, as you think in your heart, you are forming the possibilities. Abraham was 100. Sarah was 90. Uh, there was no way. Menopos- this thing have stopped. God said, okay, for Sarah, your name will no longer be called Sarai. I will call you the mother of nations so that as she is going, somebody will look at her and say, mother of nations. And it will look as though they are mocking her. But in the I saw in the mind of Abraham. She said, no, I am truly the father of nations. I am truly the mother of nations. So, somebody might look at you and say, ah, for that family, nobody don't marry, no problem. But the Bible says that he set the solitary in families. I know somebody might say, right, this woman is barren. No problem. But the Bible says that he gave it children. That children are a heritage of the Lord. That becomes your mindset. That becomes your thought. Refuse those wicked, stupid thoughts of failure. A man is first of all a failure in the mind. Before before it actually occurs physically. Sir, he tells you that ah, they said one to another, go let us make brick. And burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. Slime and they had mortar. Next verse. They said, go to, let us build us a city. And a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Men are talking. Next verse. And the Lord came down. Follow this. They made a plan in verse 4 of what they wanted to do. Verse 5, they've not started it all. They just made a plan in their mind. Now look at. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built there. Give us new King James. Maybe this one sounds. A new King James, please. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. In God's perspective, as far as they've imagined it, it was done. God left heaven. These guys made a plan, no? And God said, Kai, let me come down. Let me see. He checked the minds of these people. See, some of us say we are already a success. You, You may not see it physically, but there is a law. And the Lord came down to see the city. That is why learn to dream with God. Learn to see the visions of God for your life. When you see those nightmares, it's to call, who told you you can't be the mother? It's a, it's a corruption. He came down to see the sons, the two of which the sons of men had built. King James version of the next one, verse 6. <laughs> what a law. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now, Kai the Fletenekoma. God, with his power, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. Imagined to do. Sama, as you think in your heart, that is how you are. You see this life now. It's a reflection of what is in, mostly these Sokoto people. Small, small. You will never think any global thing. Continue. That is how that is it. There is a pattern. 
this is what has affected family. That's why you notice there are some families, they are just the same. Nobody is married. Check their mind. You will notice that everybody thinks that way. Consciously or unconsciously, the, the devil has sold out a thought to you. So, the moment you go for a job interview, there is already something whispering to you that kind. See, um, you will not get the job. Yes, as you think. So, it now manifests. You now notice people don't like you. It's not a thing. So, it's the mind. The, the mind is programmed to attract lack of favor. As you think. So, which they have imagined to God was incapacitated to stop these people. Imagine how your life would be. What has God told you? Sir, it's possible. Dream with God. I know now you have five members. <laughs> and he told you you talk to millions. He didn't tell you that it, it will come to pass by your capacity. No, sir. Dream with God. Uh, the vision is for an appointed time. Sir, though it tarries, wait for it. That's why he tells you, write the vision. Make it plain. So that you can, who told you you will not be, be married? It's a lie. Who told you that you will be poor? It's a lie. How you see how you get these things is look for those scriptures. I see we don't understand how to how to overcome things. See, the kingdom of God is in systems. Don't study your Bible haphazardly. Today, Genesis, tomorrow chapter. You just read no. Look at your life. What area of your life is not bearing fruit? Are you maybe suffering from addiction or unfruitful see this how for three months write out those scripture let it be your morning devotion let your mind be so so if I show you my Bible this is how I got transformed if something is doing me I'm not studying every and anything sit down when your mind see what God is saying I can bet you sir nothing nothing do you know what is nothing as far as you can desire it it is your own that is why God is calling you for, to into a system of mind renewal. And he calls it that. See, it is a system of worship. Dream with God. God is calling somebody into a deeper and a higher end. Sit down. Are there areas in your life? Don't worry. I know, see, how you change things. The thing must first of all change spiritually. Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.16. Ah. Jesus. Oh. Oh. Let my worship rise, Lord. Smell the sweet perfume. Jesus, I Jesus, I pour. Oh, let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume, Lord. Hey, I pour. One more time. I pour. Oh, let my worship rise, Lord. Like a sweet perfume, Lord. Jesus, I pour. He says, for, for which cause we faint not, we are not wicked. Although our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. What? Next verse. He now says, For our light affliction, our troubles, which is but for a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Look at the next verse. It now says, Why we look not at the things which are seen? Ah! But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, the barrenness is temporal. If you can learn to look at what is not seen. You see, this stage of no marriage is temporal. If you can dream with God. You are drinking gariba. It's what men can see. So they tag you name. It's temporal. If you can. He says, we look not at the things which are seen. He said, but the things which are not seen. He said, they are eternal. Go to verse 17 and give us maybe NLT or New King James. Um, good news. Just give us a new version of um, 17 and 18. Oh, let my word. <laughs> For our present troubles are small. You mean it? Eh? So, 
I'm taking now a, a trouble. The Bible calls it small and will not last very long. But you know why it will last long? When you refuse to see what God is saying. Yet, they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them. Ah! And will last forever. Some, uh, there will be a day you eat chicken. Uh, there will be a, you rise your you if you can dream with God. He says in verse eighteen. So we don't look at at the troubles we can see now. Don't look at it. He says rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. So don't expect people to you know agree with you. They cannot see. They are blind. That's why he tells you that these things are foolishness to them that are outside the faith. It is spiritually discerned. So he says, Kai, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. Ah, so I can see the job. I can see this ministry rising. I know you cannot see it. You come. All you are seeing is these members. But no, sir, I'm not preaching to these members. I'm preaching to millions. This is what you see. So he tells you, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. I know you drank that this evening. Ah, don't, don't worry. People will even see it and laugh at No problem. I know all they see about your shop is that small shop in one lungu. But all you are seeing is a madam that is going global. A business that is going global. So he tells you they are not seeing it for the things we see now. I know all that people are playing now is your message. Maybe in one lungu in Zuru, that's where they know you. But Sama, you are meant for global impact. So when you stay with God in that place of retreat, dream with God. Accept those visions. Put yourself in line. He says, we see now. What we see will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see like a sweet perfume Jesus Come here guys And let my worship rise Like a sweet perfume Jesus I Jesus I I will not explain the third one. Just give us Hebrews 13, 15. Let my worship rise. King James Version. And like a sweet bell. The third act of sweet worship. Jesus, I pour. He says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. He now said, That is the fruit of our lips offer, no, you know the spiritual priest offers something, he now says that the sacrifice of praise to God continually which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, live a life of thanksgiving is also a, 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 a sacrifice we offer to God give us um, Ephesians um, chapter 5 verse 20 that we offer spiritual sacrifice as thanksgiving, remember the ten lepers, learn to give thanks Learn to give thanks. Don't be a murmurer and a complainer. Give him thanks always for how many things? Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto the Father. See, learn to give thanks. People complain on their jobs. Learn to thank God. No matter what. He says, in nothing be anxious. But in everything by prayer and so we eat. Thanksgiving. That thanksgiving is also a system. Let my worship rise. Lift up your hands as you sing that song. Like a sweet perfume. Lift up your hands as you thank him. Thank him for everything in your life. Thank him. Thank him. Oh, let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Like a sweet perfume. One minute, can you just bless him from the depth of your heart? Oh, oh, let my worship rise. Let my worship rise. Like a sweet perfume. Oh, Jesus, I pour. One more time. One more time. Oh, oh, let my worship rise. Eleva la coco belita melesi 
Il a battu à Coco Bell, il t'a me laissé. Il a la hé, à Oh, 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 let me aussi price. SML, il t'a me laissé. Il a monté Coco Bell, il s'est me laissé. Alléluia. First prayer point. Lord, I thank you for this, my present state. I beg you, is there something you are crying about? Can you thank him for it? Give him all the thanks. Thank him because you are alive. I beg you from the depth of your heart. My Lord, can you thank him? Oh Jesus, Jesus, can you bless him? We are closing already. Can you thank him, the Lord? Let my worship rise. I thank you for these five members. I thank you for these ten members. I thank you for this ministry. I thank you for the people you are bringing. Hey, Jesus, I Rise. And like a sweet perfume, Lord. Jesus, I pour. Hallelujah. One prayer. Do you have a project or something that God has told you that it looks as though it will not come to pass? I beg you in the name of God. You are going to be saying, Lord, I believe your word. I receive grace to become this thing. When you hold my hand, everything, everything becomes possible. I beg you, pray that prayer that Lord, I believe. When you hold, when you hold my hands, hand, what you told me is possible. Oh, when you hold. I believe that this ministry will grow. When you hold, I believe that we will grow. Lord, I believe. When you hold, I am what you told me. When you hold, when you hold I am what you told me. When you hold, I am what you told me. Irrespective of what I'm seeing now. Irrespective of what I'm seeing. When you hold, seke te kofla kato, the brata tula na bala kato skeleta le kofla bela kate. Oh, when you hold, everything is possible. Hallelujah. In the name that is above every name, can we lift up our hands, Father? In the name of Jesus, I join faith with these ones to shift them into everything they have believed you. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let grace to be released for divine accomplishment in the name of Jesus. Whatever dream you've had, whatever visions that God has revealed to you about your life, about your destiny, about your ministry, about the works of your hands, those thoughts and desire that you have is possible. In the name that is above every name, that grace that came upon David, that made him the king, that grace that came upon Solomon, that made him the wisest and the richest. The Bible says God is able to make all grace abound unto you. In the name of Jesus, whatever dimension and level of grace required to bring you into the manifestation of that thing, that vision God has actually given you. I pray in the name of Jesus. It is released tonight in the name of Jesus. Everything you've had, every dream and desire you've had, enter into the manifestation in the name of Jesus. Wherever man has mocked you in the name of Jesus, you shall arise here like Abraham as a testimony in the name of Jesus. There are those here in the name that is above every name. You have been waiting for admission. I give you your admission tonight in the name of Jesus. There are those believing to pass exams. You have written and written again and again and you have failed. By the power of God, in the name of Jesus, as you go to take the next one, receive favor, favor in the name of Jesus. Those believing to leave this country by favor, in the name that is above every name, God will take you out and beyond the shores of this nation in the name of Jesus. 
I pray in the name those believing God for enlargement in ministry. Those believing God for enlargement in business. In the name that is above every name. Enter into that reality today in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name that is above every name. Those believing God for a dimension of increase bodily or anyhow. Maybe in grace. Maybe in, in the anointing. I pray let there be an increase in the name of Jesus. Enter into every dimension that you seek in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name we pray. I beg you in the name of God if you know you are here. I'm not calling you out. But you know truly you have not given God true worship in your body. I beg you in the name of God silently all eyes closed. I will not call you out. All eyes closed. All heads bowed. Say this prayer from the depth of your heart. Say Lord Jesus I thank you. It's foolishness to be shameful of what is gainful. I thank you for opening my eyes to true worship tonight. Lord, in the name that is above every name, I ask you for forgiveness. Please wash me clean. Have mercy upon my life. I'm sorry for what I, I have done with my body and my mind. Today, I offer it up to you. Come into my life. Rescue my soul from destruction. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. For all those that pray that prayer, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you enter a new dimension of grace, a new dimension of God's possibility from tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we jam our hands together? We trust you are blessed by this insightful teaching through the servant of the Lord, Joshua Anthony. For further inquiries, please contact 090-176-371-07 or visit our Facebook page on Destiny of International Dash Ecclesias. God bless you.